institutional equities at Motilal Oswal Financial Services, who joins us from the sidelines of the Motilal Oswal Ideation Conference. Raja, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, pleasure having you on the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about how the market is looking to you right now. At a time when rates are going up, inflation is the overarching concern. Do you think the market rally that we saw last year has hit the pause button? And if yes, what is the investor approach now? Rajat, uh, your voice is on mute. Can you just unmute yourself? Hi, good sure, morning. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think the two important things driving the markets right now, first is this entire global volatility, which is causing, you know, on a daily basis, 300 to 400 million dollar of FII outflows. I think we are uh, somewhere more positive because the domestic inflows have been very strong enough to offset that. And the second, you know, many of the sectors are facing, uh, uh, I would say, very rapid changes in their earnings outlook right from commodities to cement to paints many i mean not just the commodity producers but even the commodity users in many spaces have seen big changes in their estimates over the last three to six months at this point of time you know like the global markets the indian markets are also uh, stuck in a range and i think we will have to weather this time to see through the macro the inflation time before any definitive direction in the market comes back uh, Rajat, uh, but near term, what's your view though? Uh, good morning, Prashant here. Do, do you have a firm view in terms of, uh, I mean, when I say near term, I'm not talking about a few days, but uh, maybe a month, two months out. Uh, will we be significantly lower or will we be maybe uh, higher from these levels? So Prashant, uh, if you look at the markets, uh, you know, uh, we are going through both the price and time correction. Almost for a year now, Nifty, may be holding at the same level, but many of the sectors, many of the stocks are well below what they were a year back. In some cases, they are almost touching the pre-COVID levels also. So I think the aggregate Nifty is not right now showing the right picture because the broader parts of the markets are right now seeing a lot more damage. I think uh, 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 we just need to tread through this next one, one, three months of this aggressive rate hikes by the central banks across the world. I would think that we have gone through a reasonable part of the time and the price correction. Uh, uh, from year on, market should see more stability and with positive triggers emerging maybe after a quarter, you can start seeing things moving up again. Mm -hmm. uh, we're speaking to you from the sidelines of your ideation conference. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. I mean, what, what all would you be covering and what is the mood like now amongst the participants? Yeah, so this is our eighth uh, ideation conference. This is a conference where we essentially focus focus on companies with market caps of three hundred million dollar to three billion dollars. Uh, every every conference has between sixty five to eighty companies, uh, and these are across sectors. This time, the diversity across sectors is even more. We have lenders, we have non lenders, we have infra consumption, global IT. You know discretionary i would say that i would think that companies are right now uh, still watching the situation because whoever has been the commodity user their margins of q4 and q1 are taking a significant hit but on the other hand i think people are still positive they are continuing to invest back into the businesses from the investors profile sonia if you look at the indian market in the last one year we have seen a large ownership shift happening towards the domestic investors and this just doesn't cover the mutual fund, but there are many newer segments of domestic money which is now flowing into the equities from a long-term point of view. So from the client side, we are seeing a very exciting lineup of domestic investors, be it the mutual funds, insurance, you know, family offices, and many other investors who have, who have been putting a long-term money in this market. Mm. Uh, just curious to understand uh, our... Uh, you know, uh, when, when COVID happened, uh, because I guess of circumstances and people at home and time in their hands, many uh, decided to, and of course, I mean, markets were booming from the lows. Many decided to take uh, their investments into their own hands and, you know, do it yourself became a big thing. With uh, things becoming a bit trickier now, uh, has that started to reverse in a, in a, in a big way, uh, Rajat? 
Well, uh, uh, I think you you probably will have the both the streams running in parallel, uh, Prashant. Mm. Right? Uh, if you look at the monthly mutual fund flows, that SIP flows remains intact. The discretionary money may be volatile month over month. You have the you have one of the media that that spelled about the government raising the a contribution of equities into the pension money. So I think the institutional flows from the domestic pool into the equity markets will only get bigger and bigger with passing time. As far as the direct money is concerned, I think uh, uh, it's a function of the market sentiment also. And that keeps changing. You know, in times like this, you may see some moderation, but as you get back into a growth mode, those investors can come back. So I think finally, as a country, we have found that uh, uh, a big pool of domestic money flowing into the equities, whether it comes directly through investors or in form of large institutions, that needs to be seen. <laughs> For now, it doesn't seem like that's flowing through anywhere, right? I mean, I know the domestic money is coming in thick and fast, but uh, with the way the market is moving, one keeps questioning that. Um, Rajat, you know, I was going through your recent note on the Q4 earnings and the big takeaways from there. I do notice that in your hits in the in the sectors that have done well, oil and gas features on that list. And of course, as we know, you know, the Singapore GRMs hit a record high of $25.2 a barrel and that bodes very well for Indian refiners who have perhaps stepped up their purchases of uh, discounted Russian oil as well. Do you think oil and gas will continue to do well even in the first half of FY23? And how are companies like Reliance placed? I mean, is the best already priced into these stocks? So, you know, uh, the two parts to this first is the oil and gas. You know how cyclical this, this space is, right? Uh, the Singapore GRM last 20 years have moved from almost zero to now 25. I think 25 is something that at least I haven't seen over this long period of time. I would, I would say that the sustainable Singapore GRMs will be well below this. But till the time cyclicals have their party, the stocks also participate. So right now, uh, you know, we have seen not just the commodity producers, but even these refiners earning a, or having the best of their time. From a reliance point of view, you know, the overall contribution of, the, of, of this traditional oil and gas business has come down a lot in the total uh, valuation of the company. And that's why if you see Reliance does get a big boost from the refining margins, but from an overall value point of view, there are so many other pieces that all of them continue to do well. As a stock, it will do well, but I think the excitement that you will see in the pure refiners, like you know your MRPLs or, or Chennai Petroleum, et cetera, uh, Reliance will be a far, far more balanced bet compared to them. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> Rajat, uh, you know, after the correction we've seen, there are always opportunities which open up, right? Where uh, uh, there has been excessive pessimism which has been uh, built in, uh, which perhaps is unwarranted, and now there is valuation comfort. Can you identify some uh, some, some top ideas from your end uh, that, that you are pushing to investors uh, from your side? Yeah. So, Prashant, in the same strategy note also, we articulated that three themes which look good to us. I think one consensus theme across all your guests is banking, and we will see how that pans out after the after the credit policy today. But I think earnings-wise, credit growth-wise, they are only trending higher. Second, if you look at autos, maybe after a four or five year of underperformance, you are seeing things becoming far more better for them on the business front. I would, I would think that the worst of the earnings for the auto is behind. And the third as a theme that as a house we are very positive is this entire domestic travel and tourism. I think that uh, we are going to see a lot more wallet share increasing in favor of these companies, be it hotels, holiday planners, QSRs, multiplexes. This entire piece is going to look very exciting for the next one to two year point of view. So, you know, picking the uh, best managed companies in each of these spaces is what a good portfolio construct should outperform in the times to come. Okay, in private banks, even in your earnings wrap, you've mentioned that there's asset quality improvement, there's moderation and slippages, so that's a big plus for you. But we also, you know, are seeing that a similar trend pan out in PSUs, right? I mean, as the management of SBI was with us yesterday and they said not only is loan growth picking up, but they don't see any asset quality pressures as well in the quarters to come. Uh, do you think it's a better bet to look at large PSU banks like SBI rather than private? 
uh, I mean, just at this point, because of valuations? Well, uh, valuation has always been a differentiator for last 20 years between an SBI and the other private banks. But if a banking cycle were to do well, I think SBI will will surely tend to outperform. And the important point that you mentioned, Sonia, that last five years, the total stock of provisioning that this in, all these banks have carried, the next five years, the next three, three to five years, hopefully should be a lot lower. And if the credit cycle starts moving up to 13, 15%, I think there's a lot of re-rating that can happen, not just in the PSUs, but also in the private bank. Okay, re-rating in PSUs as well as in private banks. Just one last word on autos, you know, because you do mention that um, in Q2, of course, there was strong passenger vehicle sales, but two-wheeler sales have been weak. You mentioned it briefly a while back as well. Uh, this morning, you have some big brokerage, uh, big uh, brokerage upgrades coming in from the likes of M&M, uh, from the likes of CLSA on names like M&M. Uh, do you think the passenger vehicle space will take off in a big way now, purely because consumption is back, supply pressures have eased, raw material pressures have eased as well? Yeah, so I think the four-wheeler pack will should hopefully do better than the two-wheeler. And within that, we are, we are already seeing good demand for commercial vehicles, tractors, and hopefully passenger vehicles post this good monsoons in the upcoming festive season should also start doing good sales. So that's why I mentioned about autos and within autos, a four-wheeler over a two-wheeler two should do better from here. All right, uh, Rajat, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure having you uh, with us here on CNBC TV. And have a good conference.